forgiveness will find those who have sincerely dedicated their lives to the service of others. Highly esteemed listeners, welcome to the Oracles of God radio broadcast, a biblical program that is run and sponsored by the Churches of Christ, which come away every Wednesday, 5.30 a.m. on Radio Universe 105.7 FM. Shall we pray? Glory, honor, adoration be to your name, O God Almighty, creator of the universe, things that are seen and not seen. We thank you so much this morning for your love, your protection, and guidance. We thank you for adding this brand new day to our lives. We bless your holy name. We continue to ask you to forgive us our sins in all forms, in thoughts, actions, and even in speech. We pray that you continue to cleanse us with the precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Once again, our hearts are full of gratitude as you continue to grant us the opportunity to know you better. We thank you for this opportunity according us to listen to your priceless oracles that will be able to build us up in this world and the world to come. Once again, we are grateful to the lives of the staff of Radio Universe that you continue to bless them as we ask for your wisdom and ability for them that they transmit this to your oracles and our to your audience. Speak through us, O oh Lord, and grant us house of understanding as we listen so that at the end we shall be a blessing to your glory. Begin and end successfully with us. In the name above all names, Jesus Christ our Lord, do we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Distinguished listeners, we continue for a series of lessons we draw from the theme Developing Character or Building Character. From the beginning of this year, this is the theme that we've had discussions on. The last topic that we've been treating is about happiness. That if we indeed want to build good character, then happiness is key. And we understood from the series of lessons we are also drawing from this subtopic that happiness is all about finding those who have sincerely dedicated their lives to the service of others. We understood how important it is to develop the spirit of happiness. And we began looking at certain recipe that will help us acquire happiness. As a lot of people pursue it, but few find it. We did say that happy people develop a happiness habit. You can't just be happy unless you developed a happiness habit. And so we even went on to talk about how there is wisdom in the advice to take two heaping cups of patience as if you are preparing a, 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 a soup or a sauce or any kind of things that require recipe that you need two heaping cups of patience one heart full of love, three hands full of generosity, a dash of laughter, one head full of understanding. Then you sprinkle generously with kindness. You add plenty of faith and mix well. Spread over a period of a lifetime and serve everyone you meet. The same listeners. You one can develop happiness or having a happiness habit but by consciously developing that habit. We also did say that happy people live to serve others. If you want to be happy, then you need to serve others. We took clues from what the wise King Solomon said, that he who despises his neighbor sins, but he who has mercy on the poor, happy is he. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 21. 
Then we moved on to also look at how happy people develop happiness. And so happy people focus on good. Happy people focus on good. Then we wonder what is the meaning of good? Because there is only one who is good, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. As he did tell us, to focus on good is to talk about good things that the Lord requires us to talk about, think about, and do them. And so we looked at how to develop this goodness. And we agree with the Philippian, the writer of Philippian, Paul, who said that we should think of only good things. If there are any virtue, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, think about these things. That led us into understanding what it meant to follow the only one good being, God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so last week we discussed about the rod and staff of the shepherd king. That it appears any time you advise someone to follow Jesus, then the person sometimes follows to a mixed feelings. That this Jesus, it doesn't mean that when I follow, then everything is going to be so smooth. And therefore, we sometimes we don't understand how to follow Jesus and what it means. So we discuss what it means by following Jesus. For the, follow, the leading of Jesus is like the rod and the staff of a shepherd king. And so we looked at the meaning of that. And so sometimes it appears rough for us. Sometimes because we are limited in knowledge and sight. We don't know why certain things happen to us. At the time that the Lord Jesus will be leading us, we might be thinking he is not. Sometimes you are being deceived by the devil, therefore, to forsake that precious Jesus, that pot that is able to hold water. Then we go for broken system that can hold no water to our own detriment. And so it is important for us to understand that the Lord Jesus Christ leads us like the shepherd king, that as the shepherd led the sheep, especially in the Palestine time, Old Palestine time, where sometimes it appears that the place that the shepherd is leading the sheep appears not to be safe, appears not to have been ideal in the face of things. However, that is the best place at the time that it is important for the sheep to be protected. And so as the Lord leads us, as he well says that all things work together for good, for those who love him, it doesn't matter what we think we are going through. If the Lord Jesus had not been leading us, it would have been worse. It would have been finished. And so we need to appreciate that it doesn't matter what we think the world will say about us. It doesn't matter how people will see us in their eyes regarding following Jesus. It is important to follow him without telling. Follow him on the mountains. Follow him when he descends and leads you in through the valley. Follow you uh, him as he crosses the bush, as he crosses the road, as he climbs and descends. And so last week, that is what we studied. Today, we want to conclude this series of lessons by continuing still with developing happiness under the theme character building. And so we continue from the shepherd king following by establishing and confirming that happy people allow the Lord to be their God. Happy people allow the Lord to be their God. Distinguished listeners, the road to genuine happiness begins with faith that is God is here. There is no truly happy atheist. A truly happy atheist is an oxymoron. No atheist can rejoicefully say, thank God I am an atheist. No. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. 
Psalm 144, verse 15. Psalm 144, verse 15. And yes, it is true. This is the business. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help. Whose hope is in the Lord his God. Psalm 146, verse 5. Psalm 146, verse 5. In fact, true happiness comes only when we submit to God. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 20. When God is our Lord, we have laid the foundation for true happiness. It is for this reason that the materialist never reaches for that which he or she thrives. Someone once said, quote, be poor and sleep well. Be rich and sleep restlessly, unquote. If we make riches our God, this God will not bring the serendipity of a good night's rest. If God is our Lord, we will have the peace of mind that passes all understanding. Paul Roots in Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Philippians 4, 6 and 7, and I quote, Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And God, the service listeners, those who trust in God have one to whom they can go for help. Just knowing that all things are working together for good brings an unexplainable sense of tranquility. And this we know, quote, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, unquote. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Paul said we know because he had experienced the Lord and he knew. Together with the Christians, they knew. And today we know. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God. And we have testified that indeed, when one relies on God and make this God of Jacob his God, oh, hallelujah, then all things work together for good for that person. The same listeners, only those who truly believe in God can reap the emotional peace of mind that comes from statements as Jesus to his disciples. And what did he say? In John chapter 14, verse 1, John 41, Jesus told his disciples, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And quotes. Believers can come to Jesus for peace of mind. They will answer his plea. That is said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. The same as Happy people believe in God. They are thus obedient to his will. Their obedience brings peace of mind. And in peace of mind, there is true happiness. Solomon was right when he said, Happy is he. Who keeps the law? Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. Proverbs 29, 18. It is as Jesus said, Happy are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Luke chapter 11, verse 28. Luke 11, 28. It is true, therefore, the same listeners, 
that the happiest people in the world are those people who believe in God and submit to his will. Their happiness is founded on what, what is yet to come, not what is only in this life. If you will be happy in the truest sense, you must focus on God and what he has prepared for those who love him. And what he has prepared for the righteous is an eternal hope of glory in his presence. This is the hope and happiness of the righteous sons of God. Always remember the following words that are from God to encourage each of us. In Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. Numbers 6, 24 to 26. Say, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Who can grant peace apart from the Lord Jesus Christ? There is no peace anywhere. And where there is no peace anywhere, then the true happiness is an elusive adventure to pursue in this life without the Lord Jesus. For he gives peace. For he himself is peace. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 downwards, he said, Jesus is our peace. He is peace. And so if peace precedes happiness, and they are intertwined, one can never attain true happiness without Jesus Christ. The same is this. That is why we need to understand how we need to build our hope on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he leads us as a true shepherd king. For his rod and his staff do comfort us. The same listeners. Again, it is important to realize that if we want to do what happy people do, then we need to note that happy people are also incurably optimistic. Happy people are incurably optimistic. Angelo Celiliano was a 97 pound, 44 kilogram rant at the age of 16. He was 97 pound, that is 44 kilogram rant at the age of just 16. He was bullied around by classmates, pushed around by friends and foe alike. And as any physically weak and small teenager, life was not the best. However, one day he saw the status of Apollo and Hercules in the Brooklyn Museum in New York. These images of two Greek gods formed an image in his own mind as to what he wanted to be. He immediately bought a newspaper and started exercising according to an exercise program that was printed in the newspaper. He eventually developed his own exercise program. He took control of his destiny through exercise. A few years later, his dreams were realized. We know him today as Charles Atlas. The same business. Pessimism and unhappiness are twins. Numerous surveys have been conducted concerning the mental state of those who are successful in the business world. Every survey concludes that optimistic, cheerful business people who always look on the bright side of things are more successful than pessimistic business people. Successful people are optimistic about the future. On the other hand, pessimism produces unhappiness, and unhappiness produces disease, or better, disease. The seriousness. Dr. Maxwell Marx once wrote of a businessman who told him, quote, I have just lost $200,000 on the stock market. I am ruined and disgraced, unquote. Mars then said to the man, It is a fact that you lost $200,000. It is your opinion 
that you are ruined and disgraced and good. They say, wait, wait, wait. Happy people never add their opinion to their circumstances. They are simply optimistic about the future. The great inventor Thomas Edison once lost a multi-million dollar laboratory in a fire. Someone asked him immediately after the fire, what will you do now? Mr. Edison replied, we will start rebuilding tomorrow morning, unquote. The service listeners, when things look bad, focus on good things to come. Truly happy people are incurably optimistic about the future. They always look on the bright side of things. And by looking on the bright side of things, things that are good are happening in their lives. The service listeners, if we are able to imbibe all these series of lessons that we are trying to study to develop character this year, then the sky will not be the limit. We want to really achieve and even exceed our target of life measurement. And this year we began making a whole lot of resolutions. And that is why this lesson is very important. It's a kind of lesson that we need to repeat over and over again in our mindsets to develop character that we will not find ourselves sometimes even just three months down the line. Or as we are the fifth month in the year, we will realize that we even not go near our resolution at all. Or better still, we've abandoned it all together. Why? Because we will lack character that will enable us to pull through to achieve and even exceed our target. Developing character has been our theme, therefore. We have looked at how character development is key this year. And we have looked at to launching into the adventure that there is a need for us to build character. We began looking at how important it is for character development in husbands. How husbands need to develop character that will make them husbands in it. We also look at how to develop character in wives. And we did say that couples need therefore character development. What are the resolutions for the married couple this year? And the resolution that we have, where are we now in the fifth month? Are we imbibing the series of lessons we are drawing from the theme character building for husbands and wives? Are we behaving as married people? Our mindset on the importance of marriage even and what character development are we having? Again, we also move on to characters in fathers and mothers. And we discuss in length what it takes to be a father and what it takes to be a mother and how parents need to develop character for their children to emulate. Character development as a father, as a mother. We are in the fifth month of the year. Where have we reached in our character development? If we have forgotten ourselves, let's quickly get back on track and behave as fathers and mothers who are geared on reaching their goals this year as fathers and mothers. We moved on into character development in sons and daughters. And we said there is no glory in any son or daughter that will not obey their parents. As sons and daughters, we've roles to play in the home. And so we need to develop character that will make us in these sons and daughters. We move on to our health, family, and friends. And we said that in developing character, our health also matters. And we should be cautious of our health and what we are to other people. We are family and our friends. 
if we will not break the hearts of our family, friends, and friends, and even disappoint our own selves, we should be in good health. All that it takes to be cautious regarding health should be implored as we pursue our resolution this year. Then we moved on also to look at dignity in character, that we should be people of dignity. And by dignity, we should be able to have our integrity intact and develop character. Then we move on to neighbors with character and demonstrate, ask us to demonstrate good character principles to our neighbors. We move on to productive character and we look at principles of productive character. Then we came to the responsible character. And in the responsible character, we say that we have responsibility to develop character for those around us, for ourselves, the nation Ghana, and the world at large. Then we move on to building on principles of character. And we look at a lot of principles that one needs to acquire if one needs to develop his or her character. We move on to building on a foundation of faith that's important to build our foundation of character development on faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And it is incumbent on the one who wants to come to God that he has faith, that he is, and is reward of all those who draw nigh or seek him. Character development without faith is useless. Faith that will move mountains. Faith that is unwavering, we said it about that. Then we move on to the direct and indirect work of God. That we need to understand how God works. That God works both directly and indirectly. And in the direct period in the Old Testament time and the early part of the New Testament, God works directly. And people think that it's only by direct way that God works. But a lot of God's work is also indirectly where he works behind the scenes, manipulating the natural laws of nature and the systems for our good. And so we have to develop faith on this indirect providence of God. And when we do that, we will understand, we appreciate, even though we do not understand exactly, totality, how God works, because he is God. However, we will begin to believe that because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Then we went on to dealing with doubts, and we studied a lot about what doubt does to ourselves, how negative doubts impinges on ourselves. We move on to patience, and before we even move on to patience, we had to discuss how important it is to follow our Lord Jesus Christ that shatters our doubts, for he leads us as the shepherd king. We looked at how this shepherd king uses his rod and his staff in times of danger to protect us. To us, it appears as if we have lost the way. But he said, no, we are on the right track. So at times that we find difficulties, those are the times that we should realize that the Lord is rather in us in the fire and in the boot. Just as the disciples forgot that Jesus was in the boat with them. And so at any time, in times of difficulties, that is even the time we should realize that he is with us. So that we are not deceived by the deception of the devil to throw away the pot that can hold the water and go for broken systems that can hold no water. Brethren, it is important to for us to understand. And today we also look at how patience works and what brings happiness. These are a series of lessons we've gone through this year. About 17 topics that we have discussed. We wish the Lord continue to be with us. That as we are developing character this year, this year, this year, it will not be like the past years. And this will be a beginning of things for us to achieve and realize our goals beyond our expectations as we've understood that without Christ, it's just impossible to achieve all this. 
And so we agree with the last topic, the last topic we have discussed today, that it is important for us, if we want peace, if we want happiness, that is the Lord Jesus. He grants happiness, for he is our peace. Because peace and happiness are twin brothers. And so if you don't have peace, there is no way. There is no peace in material things by themselves. But our peace and happiness was on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it is built on something which is even not here, but yet to come. All things that are here are temporary, and they shall decay. And so we will end this series of lessons by repeating what God told us through Moses again. In Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. That may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. Once again, this has been the Oracles of God radio broadcast. A biblical program that is run and sponsored by the Churches of Christ. Which come your way every Wednesday, 5.30 a.m. Make a date with that same time God will the next week. As God continues to unravel his priceless oracles. You are warmly invited to worship with the Churches of Christ all over the country. The pillar of truth where unadulterated word of God is shared and God is worshipped in spirit and in truth. You may want to contact us on 024-5527-658 or send us a message on coc.radio.com. We are also located on Facebook at Church Radio. Church Radio. I am your brother, Eric Darko. Now may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify us through and through. May our whole body, souls, and spirit become blameless at the appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Till we meet again, stay richly blessed. Amen and good morning.